Hello everyone, David here. Hope you're having a great day. In this video, the 10 best cheaper hardware compressor you can buy. Here we go. This is gonna be the first of a series of short videos in which I will try to reply the most common question I get asked about gear both home studio, what to start with gear, to the best band for the buck, to the more high-end pricey pieces. Today we start with the 10 best cheap compressor you can buy. If you are on a very limited budget, 100 bucks limited budget, and you want your first hardware compressor, the Behringer MDX 2600 V2 will cost you only 99 bucks. Many years ago, I had one of these, and you know, maybe it won't last you a long time, and it's definitely not a studio quality unit, but if you think of it as a low fine dirt box compressor, it makes sense and it has its place. It has an external side chain, expander gate, compressor limiter, and deesser adaptive knee, auto attack and release, and even a two emulation, which, well, it's 99 bucks. No, it won't sound better than most plugins, but it will definitely give you a different color, and it's definitely worth taking into consideration for live shows. Right after it though, for just a little more than 200 bucks, we already see a unit that everyone should have. The FMR RNC is arguably the undisputed king of budget compressors. The Giant Killer, one of the most transparent compressors out there, regardless the price. I have one, I had one for years, I still use it and love it. This little gem is really a giant killer. When it first came out, many engineers were wowed uh, by how good this compressor was. Pinning down vocals in such a clean and transparent way that was only possible with high-end compressors before. With its super nice mode being technically two compression stages in Cascade, this little compressor can be super, super snappy on drums as well. I have a video review already on the channel. If you want to hear it in action, it's actually a comparison with the next in the list, which is going to be the RNLA, the color offering of FMR, but a little more than 200 bucks, the RNC is a no-brainer. And so the next one is the colored brother of the RNC, the RNLA. It offers the same quality, arguably a little better because it has balanced input and output. The same concept, no frills, just sound. The RNLA is the colored version. It's a leveling amplifier with variable attack and release, and actually uh, the release can be logarithmic or linear, which makes it really fun on drums. He has a very nice vintage vibe and color on vocals, synth, and bass, for example. As for the RNC, I also have an RNLA in my rack. I had it for years, I use it all the time. It is a great tone compressor for any kind of material. This one is priced about 250 bucks, so just 40 bucks more than the RNLA. Again, another no-brainer. If you're not sure which one to get, well, I would say both. But if you can't, just watch the video comparison. You can hear them both in action. Link is gonna be in the info box down below. Fourth in the list, the R Pro VLA2. I had one of these as well. I had it for some time. A great sounding compressor and it's stereo. This one is an opto compressor with tubes in it. It's not a tube compressor, it has a tube stage. It doesn't affect the signal path and the color of the unit that much, but it adds something nice. But if you saw my video on tube gear, you know that tubes in it doesn't really mean anything. It's all about the design around the tubes, but still, the Art Pro VLA2 is a great sounding comp. For just $2.99, it's a no-brainer, it's a stereo compressor, great view meter, great metering, and actually a nice uh, balancing feature when you use it in stereo because you can control both channels with one a set of controls and balance the stereo image with one of the other knobs. I don't remember which one. I had it for some time, and when I had it, I liked it for drums. Uh, go figure, it's an opto compressor, but if with certain settings and slow attack, you can get really snappy uh, drums and a nice distortion, a nice saturation because of the tubes. If you gain stage it correctly, it doesn't have that much headroom, so you have to pay attention to that. I like it on vocals, I like it on synths. It can be cool on acoustic material, but not on low-end material because it tends to fart a little bit, even at long release settings. Uh, you can actually change the tube in it. You just pop the top 
and can experiment with different tubes. But like I said, in that design, they don't make that much difference. So you can experiment, just don't spend too much money in these experiments because the tubes don't change the sound that much. Regardless, it's definitely worth more than its price, is a good sounding comp. Fifth place, the PBC6A, another FMR. This one was released years after the two mentions before. I had two of them at one point. This one differently from the RNLA and RNC is mono. The other two are stereo. So I had a stereo pair. I used them for some time and I know them quite well. If you want a ton of color, like pouring cream on your material, this is the compressor for you. It has a more refined build than the two uh, FMR mentioned before, and it costs a little more, but still less than 300 bucks. This compressor is not going to sound clean or transparent, no matter the settings. Its controls and action are nothing like other compressor you've heard or used. Unique is quite an understatement, but it has definitely a learning curve and it's not for everything. Uh, but I have a hard time thinking a thicker sounding compressor out there. On this one, you don't even have an input and threshold control, you have drive and knee. Uh, so gain staging with this is key because no matter what settings, this unit is gonna compress your material. But it's definitely a great sounding compressor, a lot of fun for this price, definitely worth getting it if you want color. At about 480 bucks, we entered the real deal territory. I have one sitting here next to me. I studio hop a lot here in Los Angeles waiting for my new room to get built. So I keep with me only the essential gear that I need for mixing and that I can also carry around easily. The Comp 3A along with the Brother 2A that you see next to it, which will be in this list as well, recently earned their spot with my high-end gear in my rack because they sound really good. The 3A is a gritty compression reminiscent of the old LA3A with some modern feature like the high-end frequency sensitivity and the gain mod. The action of this compressor is a classic heard on so many records. A favorite for guitars, hip-hop and rock vocals and many other things, the 3A is a very very versatile compressor with a nice unique color that will definitely add something to your tracks. Easy to use, just two knobs and your ears, arguably one of the best bang for the box deals out there. Uh, this golden age is legit. I have a dedicated review of both the 2A and the 3A here in the channel if you want to hear them in action. The next one is also a classic. It will take you 500 bucks to get it. The DBX 160A. Well, actually this is a reissue and many people feel like it doesn't sound exactly like the original, which, well, it doesn't but also it doesn't matter. The new DBX-160A is still a classic. You can see it used in so many studio. And while might be slightly different, will give you that over easy compression sound it was famous for. So many vocals have been mixed with this compressor and so many drums too. I have one here in LA at Harmony Studio that I use often. It's such a familiar sound. Even if you don't know it, you heard this compressor on so many records. DBX also makes a 500 series version of this compressor, which I never personally tried. I heard it sounds good, but for 500 bucks, you get the DBX 160, which is still a classic sound. Again, from Golden Age, this time is the Comp 2A. If you saw my review here on the channel and also the Uncut Studio Session video, uh, when we were testing it at Echo Bar Studio, you know how much I love this compressor. I mixed the last Reagan Romance single with this one on vocals. At just below 600 bucks, this is a legit full tube compressor with transformers that sounds like a million bucks. I love it. I preferred it in two occasions to an LA 2A that was available in the studio. That says a lot. The action and the color of this compressor on vocals, it's great. The saturation is really something you can't get with plugins and it very quickly became one of my favorite compressors for vocals. I also love that they made it in half rack format, although the unit is very deep and heavy to accommodate the four tubes and two transformers, it's still nice to have it in half rack space. Considering the price, this is without a doubt one of the best bang for the bucks hardware compression that you can get right now. Next one is the Drummer 1978. I was one of the first one to get it. Uh, you know I have it, I had it for years. We have an extensive video demo 
demo review here on the channel. This is a workhorse compressor. You will have hard time finding material where it doesn't work. One of the most versatile compressors, regardless the price, it also happens to sound great. The so very tweakable sidechain and onboard EQ makes this compressor a beast. So many options, so many sounds and a nice independent saturation stage that you can use independently from the compression to color your tracks. But while we are approaching the 1K mark for the price at about 860 bucks, this compressor will stay with you for a long time and will get more use than many compressors that cost twice or more. Last on the list, another one that you see behind me, the West Audio Mimas. Yes, I have this one too, but this is how you know I am being real. I bought and sold more compressors than I can remember. And only after years of experience and thousands of mixes for clients, I feel like I can make a list like this and help you out guys. I selected my gear through years of trial and error and I'm sure some things will change and you will definitely see some new gear coming here soon. The ones I have, I genuinely feel like they are the best out there. I'm going to do a dedicated review for the Mimas because you guys asked, but this compressor just sounds plain crazy. Wes Audio was able to pack what's for me the best 1176 style compressor out there in one slot 500 gear rack. With not one, but two transformers in it. It has sidechain, independent saturation, and all the functions that you can find on an 1176. Plus it's digitally controlled with touch sensitive rotary encoders. Like I said, it sounds great. We are talking high-end gear at this point, but the Mimas sound and react like what I want from an 1176. I have two Universal 1176 and I sold them, then I got this one a couple of years later and I loved it. So much so that you saw me tracking vocals for the hip hop course uh, at Promix Academy and so many people who bought that course told me how ready or ready were the vocals even before the mixing. Well. The Mimas was a big part of it. Just below 1K, this compressor is a classic, a standard for modern vocals, snare, bass, drums. And with the added features, sidechain, digitally controlled, preset, it's perfect for modern music. But this is it for this video. I hope it was useful. I hope you liked it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. If you have any question, leave it in the comment down below. All the links to these compressors and some great deals on plugins are gonna be in the info box down below as well. Follow Mixbus TV on Facebook and Instagram for exclusive content and news. Check out the new website, mixbustv.com. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.